Hey, this is Brock Lemires, and we're continuing our study of embedded systems design by looking at timers. In this video, we are specifically looking at timer overflows, and we are going to kind of build on the last video that we did by looking at some settings of how to divide the clock down. So in we've looked at some timer overflows where we use a slow clock like a clock and that was 32 kilohertz <clears throat> and and it and if we didn't do anything it gave a relatively slow counter and in, in fact that's about the slowest overflow you can have if you have the 16 bit timer in here and it would count up to 2 to the 16 and roll over and we wanted to speed that up by reducing the counter length so we reduced it to 12 bits and then it overflowed faster because it only had to count up to fff then we switched over and we looked at SM clock, and SM clock was hauling. Okay, so it was really fast when we went down to the, you know, the 16-bit timer. And we're now we're looking at like, well, how can you slow down something, right? Because if you're running at one megahertz and you're already at 16 bits, it's that's about as slow as you can go for the <clears throat> for the overflow. And so what we're looking at now is the way to slow it down is we can actually divide sm clock prior to being driven into the timer so that we get something that's slower so in this example let's let's divide sm clock by four and we'll use the first stage divider and that will allow us to drive in the uh in the clock to the timer as a 250 kilohertz clock and so when you do the calculation it's always you know period of clock times the number of counts we're doing overflow so the number of counts is always two to the n, and the n is the width of the counter. And then what we do now is one over the clock frequency. In this case, we're gonna take the one megahertz divided by four. So when you do that calculation, the overflow will occur every 262 milliseconds. And so what we'll do is we'll toggle an LED every 262. So it'll be like on, off, on, off. So it'll basically flash twice per, uh, twice per second. And we'll be able to easily see that and actually probably even time it, so. Okay, so let's fire up Code Composer and let's start developing our program. So I'm going to go File, New, CCS Project, and let's call this ASM Timers SM Clock, and we'll call it Overflow, but this time we'll do Div, Div 4, okay? Empty only, Assembly, and we're off and running, okay? All right, so we come down here, ba -da -ba -ba -da. here we go, we're in our main loop. And let's go ahead and do our initialization of the LEDs. And so we're gonna let's we'll toggle LED one. So let's go bit set dot b. And we're, we'll first first and foremost what we'll do is we'll set uh, LED one the port on that to an output. So I'm gonna do pound bit zero, and that is in the P one DIR register. This is set uh, port one bit zero to output, and that's LED one. And boy, are you getting sick of doing LED one? <laughs> Let's also do LED two. Okay. So now LED two, you're where is LED two? If I look at the launchpad board, I see that it's on bit uh, six of port six. And so let's do let's do that. Let's let's get LED two into here just so we're not just getting so sick of this red LED. We'll have a green LED. And let's go ahead and do our bit clear dot B. Remember we're doing port. Uh, port configuration, so everything's 8-bit because the ports are operated as 8-bit when you call them P1 through P6. And what we'll do here is let's do this. Let's clear uh, LED1. I'm going to do this, and that's port 1 out. So I'm going to clear LED1. And then let's set LED2. Okay? And I could do P6 out. So then I'm going to set LED2. And then what we'll do is we'll, we'll have an interrupt service team. We'll toggle the LEDs. But since they're at different starting values, then what will happen is that they'll toggle back and forth. And it'll just be awesome. <laughs> okay. So I got those little buddies set up. So remember, let's turn on the, let's turn on the digitalized I.O. system by clearing the pound lock LPM LPM5. And that's in the port power module five CTL zero register. So that's turn on digital IO. Okay, so now that was setting up the LEDs. So that's uh, set up LEDs. 
And now let's come down here and we'll do setup uh, timer. And let's use B0 again, just because we can. And here we go. So the first thing, remember, first thing we want to do is we want to clear the timer out by writing a one to the TBCLR bit. And that's gonna clear the timer output and also the length and the mode control. This is recommended for the data sheet. And so that's what we're gonna do first. So we'll go ahead and do a bit set. And now we're back to 16 bit operations because the configurations registers for the timers are 16 bits. So I'm gonna do a, let's see, I want to clear this buddy. So I need TBCLR. So that's the bit mask from the header file, and that's in the TB0CTL register. So I'm gonna clear timer B0, and now let's set some stuff up, okay? So first, let's do the clock, so let's work left to right. Let's choose SM clock. So here I go bit set dot B, or dot W, and I'm gonna go TBSSEL underscore underscore SM clock. And you're like, wow, where'd that come from? All of these labels and, and bit mask and configuration register names <clears throat> come from the header file, so we don't have to type them out, and that's awesome. And so this is in the TB0CTL <clears throat> register also, so this is choose SM clock, and now we need to go do this. We need to now, for the first time, mess with the first stage divider. Well, it turns out there's a mask for these bits, ID, and they are, this is the mask, so it's BIS.W, and it's actually pound ID underscore underscore four, and then you go, and this is in the TB0CTL register, and then, so we do div four in first divider stage, and there it is. Now you go, wow, that was a cool, cool bit mask. Where'd you get that? And so the answer is you gotta define all these names and the spellings, you gotta go into the include file. So that's where you go down in your project and you know you go into includes and then there's you know this is the one where there's like a million of these files and you have to scroll down to you know you go to the includes this is the one you scroll all the way down to msp 430 fr2355.h and you look at all of them right and it's that's where you find all these <clears throat> the spellings of all these bit masks okay so anyway at this point what we've done is chosen sm clock we've chosen the divider stage and now let's put this in let's put the timer in continuous mode and remember that's what allows it to go up roll over and continuously run for all time but more importantly when it rolls over it sets the flag the overflow flag and so that's what we're going to trigger our interrupt with so now what we're going to do is let's put this into continuous mode so i'm going to do a bit set dot w and the mask is MC underscore underscore to continue us. And that's again in the TB0CTL register. So this is uh, put into the timer into continuous mode. And of course, you know, the, the labels sometimes are, the bit masks are so descriptive sometimes that the comments are stupid. So now, that's it. That, that means the, the these four instructions will get the timer up and running. And now let's do the IRQ. So let's now turn on the, the IRQ. So the first thing I want to do is the local enable. So let's do a bit set. And this is the mask is TBIE. And it's in the TB0CTL register again. And that was a typo. So let's do uh, local enable for overflow. Okay. And life is good. Oh, that ain't it. So it's TB0CTL. Okay. And now let's do the global enable, which I'm just going to do E I N T enable interrupts so this is global enable and that that enables all maskable interrupts but the only one that'll fire is any that have their local enable set up and so that's the local and remember we're doing timer b0 that's why i'm, I'm configuring everything in the tb0 ctl so that's how you choose between the four different timers in timer b so we're doing b0 okay and as always i like to clear this flag so i'm going to clear this flag okay and bit clear and the flag is t b uh, FG, and that's also in TB0 CTL, and this is gonna be the clear flag. Again, the, it's cleared out of reset, but I just like doing it because I wanna know what's happening. Okay, ready for a main program? Everything's set up, and stupid main program, nothing but spin. Of course, it's a waste of cycles, but you know, we probably should put it in low power mode, but we don't know how to do that yet. So that's it, that's my main program. So now it's time to do some interrupt service routines. So I'm gonna grab a little comment header, and after my main program, I will then put 
some ISRs. So I'll put ISR comment there. And let's call it, we got to give it a label. ISR, I always like to start with that, TB0, overflow. That's pretty descriptive. And what are we going to do here? Well, let's exclusive, let's toggle uh, LED1 by doing a toggle with immediate addressing bit mask of bit zero. This is going to be P1 out. Okay, so that's toggle LED1. But let's also toggle uh, Let's also toggle LED2 while we're sitting here, just because we're getting bored with that red LED. So we'll do P6 out, and this will be a toggle LED2. All right, so I did it. Now what do I need to do? Well, I got to remember that if this interrupt service routine is executed, it's because the flag was set, and I need to clear that flag so it can run again, and then I just return from interrupt. Okay, so I'm feeling pretty good. The only issue is that when this interrupt fires, it's going to go down to the vector table and try to get the starting address of my, of my interrupt service routine. So I need to initialize that. So I'm going to grab that label, address label, and I'm going to come down here. And from our big table in the book of the data sheet, I learned that dot int 42 is the timer B0 overflow vector. So that's where I need to stick my address label which is the starting address of the interrupt service routine. And so now when that guy fires, it's gonna to go to the vector table that's at this address, grab the starting address, go put the program counter up here. It will then toggle LED1, toggle LED2, and then it will clear the flag and return and magic. <laughs> okay, so let's see what kind of mistakes we made when we were typing. So I go ahead and compile that. And here it goes, here it goes. I got Everything looks like it's kind of working along. It looks like it's downloading. I got, okay. So got my board plugged in over here and let's just see if it runs. So here I go. I'm gonna go ahead and hit go. See what happens. <laughs> Woo, look at that. <laughs> so look at this, look at this. So I got my, my LEDs are flashing back and forth and how fast are they going? So let's just look at the red one really quick. So. Uh, let's see, stop, reset, go. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So it's going on and off. It's going on, it's turning on about two times per second. So it's on, off, on, off, on, off. So that's happening about every quarter of a second, which would be 250 milliseconds. <laughs> and then we have LED2 flashing back and forth because we're sick and tired of just having an LED one run. And look at that. That is awesome. All right. You did it. <laughs> okay. Congratulations. And you just, you just, you just did it. You used SM clock. You divided it by four. You toggle two LEDs. Congratulations. All right. That's it. As always, support my channel by subscribing and see ya.